Welcome back everybody. It is time now for another networking hands-on or how-to video. Today we are going to build a DHCP server using a Cisco router. Now we do this all the time in the lab. It's a lot easier than setting up say a Windows box or a Linux box as a DHCP server. So you can really have this up and running in just a couple of minutes and we're going to do that real time right now. Let me show you my topology. So I've got a router here, I've got a switch, a couple of nodes connected, I might have VLAN set up, and hopefully the, the background noise from the gear is not too much for us here, but uh, without further ado, let's get this set up. So let me get my interfaces back up here, and there's my router. All right, now I'm going to first set up a DHCP scope. I'm going to do IP DHCP pool and we'll do wired and most people think of DHCP as giving them an IP address and that's absolutely true and the way that we decide what IP addresses we're going to give out are based on the networks that I provide and the mask associated with this and the mask just determines the size of my pool there are a couple of other basics here. We can see that DHCP can be used for an awful lot of stuff. So let's add a couple of really basic things here to, to keep us going. So I'm going to use a, a default router. And that will be the interfaces that I eventually give to my router. And then maybe we'll do a name server as well. Uh, whoops. forgot we're not talking Linux here. And we'll just make something up. I'm not actually connected to this network, but this would be something basic that we might need. Now, a lot of times DHCP is used to expand the capability of a particular service that you might be offering on the network. And as an example, we're going to set this up for voice over IP later on. So I might also include something like an option. So there's lots and lots of option codes. In the case of voice over IP, we're going to use option 150. And you'll see here in a bit, we're actually going to use the router as a TFTP server as well. All right. Um, now, it's also important to remember that DHCP servers exist on a local area network, which also means that the hosts have to be connected to the same layer 2 network as the DHCP server. That means that if you want to run hosts several routers away and still get to the same DHCP server you have to set up something called relay so what I'm gonna do is if I was to do that, I might do relay and then I would provide the information for the relay agent and again that means that my DHCP server is not on the same subnet as the hosts that are trying to get an IP address we're not gonna do that here but uh, it's an option available to you used a lot of times in larger networks one of the other things that I want to take advantage of here is the idea of an excluded address I just told my DHCP server my router here that I want to give out all of the addresses from that are possible in this scope so 1 to 254 that would also mean that there's the possibility that I might give a host the IP address of my router and I want to make sure that I don't do that so I am going to exclude that IP address. Now I'm also going to work on the other scope later on, so we'll also ensure that my other router interface that I'm going to configure is not given out either. So let's do our other DHCP pool. So I'm going to set up VoIP maybe on the other subnet here. And we'll do network there. there and default router on this particular note that uh, while this is going to be served up by the same router the interfaces that provide the DHCP messaging and therefore the DHCP messages will be two different interfaces again because it's a layer two thing well let's also set up our interfaces and let's see. And let's 
Let's do the other one. I'm do a no shot there. Now let me back out here just for a second and I'll show you my routing table. And we can see that I've got two networks directly connected and I've built two scopes theoretically that should be serviced by these two interfaces and all of these messages are coming from the router. Right. So if I do a do a show run here real quick, here is my DHCP configuration stuff. Okay. Well, let's see if that works. So I'm going to go over here and first we'll plug in our host. Now, as I'm plugging into the switch, the switch is going to do spanning tree uh, discovery. But we can see that my interface just came up. And while we're waiting for the switch port to go forwarding, and that looks like it's uh, on the way there, so let me check with my command line interface. And hey, it looks like I've gotten a uh, an IP address. Although, and you can also check it here. Let me check one other thing here. For some reason, it's not giving up my. So I'll just just do some of the actions that I can do on the Windows command line. I just told it to release everything and renew everything. And the reason that I'm doing that is because for some reason my default router didn't come through. So I just want to make sure that. We're swapping some packets here. Let's check this again real quick. Hey, that looks a little bit better. So here we see that I've got my default gateway and my uh, my DNS. And the node is also aware of where the DHCP server is. All right. Yep, and now my command line is... Agree. All right, so that just took a second for Windows to figure it out, but the Cisco is has got it set. Now, this is also going to be part of a, a VoIP deployment that we're going to do here in a little bit. So, let's set up the router as a TFTP server as well. And we see on the directory that I've got a whole bunch of files here on the router. So these exist on the router flash. And so, in a Cisco topology, the router is commonly the TFTP server. So, whoops, let's try that again, there we go. So, setting it up as a TFTP server is really easy. So, a TFTP server, and then I'm gonna highlight the files that I want, okay, and just put them in there. And to speed things up, I've already done a couple of these, but you see how this works, that I would take, and we'll do the 61s here, but you see how that goes. All right. So again, we'll take a look at our running config here. There's my DHCP stuff. There's my interfaces, my TFTP server stuff. And so we should be ready to go. All right, everybody. So that was Cisco DHCP servers and TFTP servers. I hope this uh, helps you out in your lab work or in whatever you might be working on. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and remember, it's networking. You can do this.